welcome to our channel. Today we'll be discussing waves. It's A level physics and we'll be going over progressive waves and the formula which is E equals to F lambda and we'll also be going over the differences between transverse and longitudinal waves. So um, obviously whenever you are given a stable outline so I, I have taken out the screenshot of that outline. It's 7.1 to 7.2 that we'll be focusing on in this particular video. And for the rest of the sections, I'll be making different videos. So starting off, um, I've already written down some few basic points. Like for instance, waves are of two types. We have progressive waves and then we have stationary waves. Progressive wave, as the word progress implies, because obviously progress means to move, right? To move forward. Similarly, progressive waves are those that transfer energy as they move. But stationary wave, on the other hand, they do not transfer energy. Then, in progressive wave, we also have again two types of waves that come into the heading of progressive waves. It's longitudinal wave, and then we have transverse wave. The longitudinal wave, apart from it being a progressive wave, um, longitudinal waves are those in which the movement of particle is parallel to the direction of movement of wave. So the definition of it would be direction of propagation of wave is parallel to the movement of particles to the What does parallel mean? I'll let you know in a minute. But before that, I want you to know what transverse waves are. Transverse wave literally has the same definition, but just uh, with one reference. That is, that instead of parallel, we write perpendicular. So in transverse waves, the direction of propagation of wave is perpendicular to the movement of particles. So it's all the same thing. However, in this case, we have Instead of parallel, we write perpendicular. Okay, so let's suppose um, we take a wave. Okay, first off, adding up a transverse wave. Now, this is a wave. It's a water wave, right? And obviously, um, the direction of propagation is towards my right. Now that's the direction of how wave is traveling. Now, as we know that the, that the particles of the water would be moving perpendicular to it, so if one is horizontal, the other would have to be vertical in order uh, for them to be perpendicular to each other. It's like x y plane, right? And Keeping that definition in mind, we would expect the particles of water to move in a particular direction and so and they are even moving in a particular direction. Like for instance, this particle over here, um, it's moving um, okay as it moves, right? It moves up okay. It's moving down. This particle is moving up. So is this particle moving up, this particle is moving down. This particle is moving down. This particle again is moving down. This particle over here, it's moving up. And so is this particle over here, it's also moving up. So as you see, all the particles over here, even though they have up and down movement, which is like different orientation, but they are in vertical plane. And therefore, um, this proves our definition that the propagation of wave is perpendicular to the movement of particles. In this case, however, the particles would assume to be moving parallel, which means they would be moving in x plane only. And that is the case indeed. For instance, let's take um, a wave. It's moving in this direction. Again, to my right. And the particles, in this case, as I said, moving an x-plane, therefore, um, 
we have particles over here. I've shown what I am trying to show you over here, but I'll tell you in a minute what these um, closed lines represent and what the spaced outline represents. So this um, point where the particles are closed is called compression, and the part on the point where the particles are separated or wide apart from each other, it's called rare fraction. So anyway, that's a different topic. The particles um, of this uh, longitudinal wave, they're moving in x plane, which is, um, for instance, this and this way, and then this way, and then this way. OK, so I've drawn, um, drawn out this particular diagram for you all to understand how the concept of movement of particle and so does the concept of uh, rare fraction and compression works. Now as I mentioned above as well, the closed sections are where the particles are closed are called compression and the particles where and the point where the particles are spread out it's called rare fraction. So we have rare fraction, compression, then compression, rare, um, compression, rare fraction and rare fraction. Now in compression, the particles are close together. They are basically coming towards each other. They are getting aggregated at a particular point. However, in the case of rare fraction, they are spreading apart from each other. They are basically like moving away from each other. Like you see in this particular case over here, um, from rare fraction to compression, the particles in, at rare fraction, the particles were moving away they are like spread out however in compression all the particles are close together similarly as we move on from compression to rare fraction the particles start to be away from each other and these lines left and right represent the direction of movement of particles and that is in x plane which means that it's, that it's parallel to the movement of wave therefore it's longitudinal wave Furthermore, the distance from one compression to another compression represents one wavelength. So the distance is equal to one wavelength. So I can write that as well here. That this distance from compression to another compression is one wavelength. And similarly over here, the distance from one crest to another crest would be equal to one wavelength. So this point is your first crest and this point is the second crest. So this distance represents one wavelength. Okay. So apart from this, I would like to give you a few examples of longitudinal and transverse waves. And longitudinal wave, we have a very popular example like sound wave and waves that are produced in a spring which is moving back and forth also produces longitudinal waves um, for transverse wave we have em waves em spectrum electromagnetic spectrum again it's a very popular example of long, a transverse wave we have water waves like um, when you go to a beach and you see water moving towards you or coming to the shore or off the shore that's an example of transverse wave now that's um, all for the basis of longitudinal transverse space. Now we'll be coming on to the formula W, uh, which is velocity equals to F lambda. Now what lambda and F are? Um, I'll tell you that real quick. V represents the velocity of propagation of wave. F is the is for frequency. Frequency means number of waves traveling in one second right and lambda is the distance traveled by one wave like one lambda distance traveled by one wave the distance traveled by one wave two lambda would be distance traveled by two waves and so on now we have uh, the derivation of the formula is very again simple we have s equals to distance over time right 
Distance in this case is represented by wavelength. Speed is represented by V. And frequency, as I mentioned, is the number of waves traveling in one second. So frequency would be 1 over T. T is a time period. So we have S equals to 1 over T into D. So that's F equals to F, V equals to F lambda. And there you have your formula. Time period is um, the time taken for one wave to travel. And frequency is the number of waves traveling in one second. Okay? Now we'll be discussing CRO, um, but before we discuss CRO, I want to tell you one small thing, which is what displacement and what amplitude is. So if you come back to this diagram over here, now you need to understand that this particular point, um, the blue ones are obviously the crest, and the, let's suppose, the, um, brown ones, they are the trope. And this line over here I'm going to draw is like the reference line. Any particle on this line would obviously be at equilibrium, right? So now the question is that what displacement is? Displacement is basically the distance um, traveled from main position. This line, the reference line, represents the mean position. And um, for instance, this point, um, this one, uh, uh, let's take one and then the, uh, let's suppose just, uh, we'll take this one as two. So one is, for instance, it's one centimeter and two is. Two centimeters. So one is displaced to one centimeter from main position, and two, which is the maximum displacement possible, is basically at has an amplitude. The amplitude is what? Amplitude is the maximum displacement possible. In this particular wave, any point on crest will have an amplitude of two centimeter. So, I hope this clarifies the concept. Displacement again is displacement from. Uh, is the distance from main position or the reference line and amplitude is the maximum displacement. Like for instance in this diagram, um, this point over here, it's at the main position. Like it has zero displacement, no movement from reference line. And this point, like uh, the one with the longest line, this has the uh, maximum uh, displacement or the amplitude. Now come back to CRO, I've made this diagram for you to understand what CRO, how CRO works. So in CRO we have time-based settings and we have y-gain setting. Time-based setting represents the x-axis and y-gain represents um, the y-settings. In this case, uh, for time-based, we have uh, two seconds per unit. So this block over here, I've made few lines which represents unit or blocks. Like for instance, this is one block. This is second block, this is third block, and this is fourth block, and so on. Um, so it means that two seconds is for each one block, and for y gain, we have this one block, this second block, and this third block, and providing the um, each block is representing three centimeters of displacement. So we have distance, we have time against distance or displacement in this particular graph in simple ways. Now, for instance, someone asks me to, um, a question comes and I'm asked to tell what's the amplitude and what's the frequency. So, amplitude is very easy to calculate. Amplitude is literally like the distance from main to crest. In this case, we have uh, the crest is taking up full two blocks, so that would be three to two. That's six centimeter is the amplitude for this particular wave. So, we can write six centimeter. 
amplitude and for frequency now frequency is the number of waves traveling in one second we cannot calculate frequency directly so there are two ways to calculate frequency you can either use v equals to f lambda but for that we will not have the v like calculating v is again another long process so we don't need to go into that or we can use uh, one over time period which is time period is the distance um a wave uh, sorry is the time taken for a wave to travel for one complete wave to travel basically so that's pretty simple you can easily see that one wave is taking up how many boxes four boxes which means that it's four seconds so one wave is taking up four seconds to travel so how many waves will be traveled uh, in one second because frequency is all about one second like number of waves traveling in one second so that would be x or r frequency would be 1 over 4 which is 0.25 so 0.25 hertz hertz is, is the unit of frequency or we can also write 1 over second so s minus 1 is the frequency for this particular case so that's CRO CRO is again very simple you, you just need to read the settings and the graph to solve the questions now for this video we are left with two major concept one is phase difference and second one is intensity so we'll be starting off with phase difference and then I'll be discussing what intensity and the calculation of intensity and amplitude is so first off phase difference now we have two words phase difference and part difference they work in the same thing literally but we just have one difference phase difference is a difference between any two points on a wave in terms of degrees or radians and on the other hand we have part difference which is the difference between any two points on a wave established in terms of wavelength or lambda so um, I can just write down what one means path difference is a distance between any two points on a oops on a wave in terms of lambda or well you can write wave run this well Now, part difference deals with wavelength. However, on the other hand, we have phase difference, which deals with the same definition again, but it just um, tells you the difference between two points in terms of degrees or radians. Like it will, uh, power difference would give you, for instance, a value of 1 lambda, which would be equal to 360 degrees or 1 pi. Okay. Now, coming on to in phase and out of phase points. In phase um, points are those points on a wave that exhibit the same behavior. Um, like, for instance, in this diagram, let's come back to this diagram to go to with one. This point, I think we should probably move on to another one, like probably a new one. Don't make it too messy. So very quickly, we um, I'm gonna make a wave. In phase points and out of phase point, to understand that, I will be showing you a diagram. And let's suppose we take this point over here. It's too thin. This point over here is moving down. 
However, this point over here is moving up. This point over here is moving again down and this point over here again is moving up. This point over here is moving where is it moving? It's moving, okay, it's moving over here, down, and this point over here is moving up. Okay, so now in phase and outer phase points, okay, I've made this diagram, right? In phase points, um, as I mentioned, are uh, they have same behavior. And those points that exhibit same behavior are normally, they are one lambda, or they are two lambda, or they are three lambda, basically integer values of lambda apart. So, let's quickly write what in-phase points are, and then I'll show you in the diagram as well. In-phase points, they are 1 lambda, or 2 lambda, or 3, and so on, um, apart. These points are integer values of lambdas apart, and out-of-phase point, on the other hand, They are decimal values of lambdas apart. Like for instance, 0 0.5 lambda, we have 1.5, we have 2.5 lambda, and so on and so forth. Now take this point over here. This point over here is exactly 1 lambda apart from this point. Right, and if you observe closely, they both are moving down, which means they both are in phase, they exhibit the same motion. However, this point and this point they have literally the opposite motion to each other, which means they are out of phase. Similarly, let's suppose we take um, we take this point over here, and we take this point over here. These two points again are exactly one lambda apart, right? And they both are exhibiting the same motion. However, this point, this point to this point is, well, this point even, they both will be moving down. This point to this point, they both are moving in opposite direction and therefore, um, point number two and point number three, and let's suppose point number two, sorry, um, again, Let's say it's 6, 2, 6, and 3. 2 is out of phase with respect to 6 uh, and 3. I hope this clear what in phase and out of phase points are. You just need to know that these two points, they have opposite motion um, with respect to each other, and therefore they are um, out of phase. And it can be they are 0.5 or 1.5 or 2.5 decimal values of Dantas apart. Or this is uh, in terms of power difference. If I were to write in terms of, so it's uh, it's in terms of, yeah, power difference. If I were to write in terms of phase difference, which is in degrees or radians, I would say it's uh, pi, three pi, four pi, and sorry, not four pi, five pi. Odd values right and so forth this is for out of phase points and if i will talk about in phase points one lambda is two uh equal to two pi or 360 degrees so one pi is two pi sorry one lambda is um two pi two lambda two wavelengths is equals to four pi and six pi and so on even numbers are in phase and odd numbers or 0.5 values of lambdas, they are out of phase. So that's all for um, this particular section of interval and out of phase. So now we're moving on to our last section, which is intensity. Um, intensity is defined as the amount of power of a wave which uh, falls on a certain area, right? So it can be written as power over area, which is basically power falling, uh, power on a particular surface area. And its units are watts over meter squared. So scalar quantity it has no direction. Another formula of intensity is intensity is slightly proportional to amplitude squared. So for instance, if I write um, amplitude is increasing to 2A. 
So what would happen to its intensity? Intensity would increase by four times. Sorry, it's not i. It's not a. It's i. It would increase by four times. Why? Because I write this. Then I write two with it. So it's square. So when I open, I open it. I get four over here. Okay. And uh, that's for when your amplitude is changed. For instance, if I take Intensity. Intensity is been has been increased to two times. So what would happen to the amplitude? Now we have two i right proportional to amplitude, and I write its square and write two over here. So two i is right proportional to because I need the square on this. Um, I need the square as a whole square, not as a square which is separately only on a. So what I'll do is. I take this two inside. I put the root two over it, and then take a whole square. So when intensity is increased by two times, amplitude is increased by under root two times. Right? Let's take another example, real quick. Another example would be when I increase the intensity to nine times. So what will happen to the amplitude? So I write nine i minus square nine i, and then I take this uh come the square. As a whole square, so I put under root and I take this nine i directly proportional to root nine is three times. So yes, when I increase the intensity by nine times, I'll be increasing by three times. That's all for this particular section. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any queries, let us know in the comment section. And thank you for watching.